What's the hardest decision you've made in business and investing? How did you fund your first flip? Are any of your courses focused on how to delegate successfully? What's going on? You've caught us on another episode of Ask Ryan, where we take your questions from Instagram and answer them right here on YouTube. We've got some really good questions this week that I'm excited to answer. But if you have no idea what's going on, if you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan Pineda. I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur. I flipped hundreds of houses. I own hundreds of rentals. And the goal of this channel is to help people start living the wealthy way. If you wanna get our free course, our free Discord community, and our free planner app, make sure you go to wealthyway.com and get all of those things. There are no upsells. It's all completely free. Now let's jump into the first question. How long did it take you to get your company where it is today? So. I currently own six different businesses that I would say are my core businesses, and they've all been started at various times. But my career as an entrepreneur got started back in 2010 when I became a licensed realtor. I did that for a few years before I realized that I hated that. And it wasn't until 2015 that I found out about house flipping and how I could start doing it with very little money. So I would say to get to where I'm at today really has been about a seven year journey. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I'd say to get to where I'm at today has been over seven years of hard work and it's evolved very rapidly from just house flipping to now making content, to having an e-commerce company, to buying apartments, to having a CPA company. Like I would have never imagined all of those things when I first started flipping houses, but things can change quick if you have the right people around you and you attack the right opportunities. Have you done estate planning and will you do a video on the importance of estate planning? Well. Here's your video. I think estate planning is super important once you reach a certain level. I don't think you necessarily need to do it if you're young and you don't have many assets, but by the time you become a millionaire, it's probably worthwhile doing. Having all your plans set out for after you die is really important, and it's something that young people don't really think about. I did my trust back in 2018 once I was a millionaire, and really was at the advice of my lenders on all my flips because they wanted to make sure that if something were to happen to me, their money wouldn't be tied up in probate or anything like that. So it's good that I've got it now and uh, it's good for everyone around that there's a plan, but um, I don't think most people really need it until you start getting some assets. Are any of your courses focused on how to delegate successfully? You know, in my coaching program, we talk a lot about building a company, how to run it so that eventually one day you don't have to be so involved. So. Delegation is an important aspect and we talk about it at Future Flipper as it relates to house flipping. But if you're not a house flipper and you're trying to figure out how to delegate, I have a solution for you, the wealthy way. One of the core values of the wealthy way is delegate to elevate. You have to learn to delegate in your life regardless of where you're at. I don't care if you own a business, I don't care how rich you are, you're gonna have to learn to not do everything yourself if you want to scale and evolve and get better and grow. It just can't happen by yourself. There's only so far you can go. So if you wanna learn how to delegate, just go to wealthyway.com and get the Wealth Builder Academy. It's completely free. How hard was it to walk away from the game of baseball? Ever get depressed after? You know, for those of you who don't know, I played pro baseball. I got drafted by the Oakland A's back in 2010 and it was literally all I ever wanted to do. You know, I just wanted to play in the big leagues. I had no ambitions to be an entrepreneur or an investor. Just wanted to play baseball. And it was very difficult at 24 years old when I got released by the A's and that dream kind of died. I'm thankful I got to play after that for five more years in independent baseball and other things, but you know, that first release was really tough and that was probably the most depressed I had ever been in my life, just like realizing, man, my dream is like probably over. So, you know, Definitely had some depression there, um, but as of today, you know, I retired back in 2017. So it's been four years since I've stepped foot on the field and played a game. Um, I don't really think about it at all. I mean, I'm so busy with business and other things and I'm having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm golfing now, which I really enjoy. So I don't really get depressed anymore, but for sure initially when I got released, that was probably the worst part. What is your title for your company? CEO, president, principal. Honestly, the title doesn't matter. You know, if you're the owner of the company, um, then for most of you, you probably wear almost every hat and you don't realize it. Uh, but for me, I, I give myself the title of CEO in all these companies. Um, I don't know that I'm necessarily the best CEO because I'm not super involved in all of them. I really should be an owner, essentially, instead of CEO. And it's actually something I've been contemplating if I wanted to get other CEOs to step into these companies, you know? 
right now I do drive them and you know I talk to the COOs and you know we're successful but I wonder sometimes if we're not reaching our full potential because we don't have somebody pushing it only focused on that company you know because my time is spread across all these various companies um, I don't give anyone like specific attention and so I am thinking about that removing myself even as the CEO in some of these and hiring somebody who can devote all of their time and energy to helping it grow and taking it to the next level. What was the hardest decision you've made in business or investing? You know, when I look back in my career, um, most people would probably guess it was when I had to max out all my credit cards to flip my first house. Um, for those of you who don't know, I had $10,000 saved up from flipping couches. And in order to flip my first house, I didn't have anybody who could give me money. And so I said, you know what? I'm just gonna max out all my credit cards to fund this flip. And so we maxed out $50,000 worth of credit cards and did the first flip. Now, even though that was really scary, it honestly wasn't that hard of a decision. Like, I was all in. I believed it was gonna work. I believed that we were gonna be successful. And even if we weren't, I was happy just knowing that I tried. The hardest decision was finally paying people to teach me things. Um, I had this negative stigma that you know, people who charge for education were just, you know, not in it for your best interest. They just wanted to make money. And so for years, I never paid for any education and I wore it as a badge of honor. You know, I was like, yeah, you know, I've done this all myself. I don't, you know, have a mentor. Uh, I figured this out on my own. And I thought I was like really cool. And it wasn't until I finally started paying for mentorship and I paid for masterminds and I paid to go to events that my business started scaling like crazy. And, you know, I just look back at that time, that was the hardest thing for me to get over was, you know, I had, had success before ever having to pay, you know, consultants and mentors and just getting over that like, man, do I really have to pay this person? Do they have the best interests in mind? And, you know, I just felt like everything should have been free. And uh, once I finally paid, you know, I remember I joined this mastermind for $25,000. I remember I bought, um, Ty Lopez's course for like three or four thousand dollars and Russell Brunson's course and these people that uh, a lot of people just don't like but it was that moment when I finally bought those courses and bought that mastermind and you know went to these events that my life started to change my business started to grow like crazy and um, there's a lot of power with proximity and getting somebody who's already been through what you haven't done yet right they can already fast track you and uh, that was my, that was the hardest thing I did was like finally realizing, man, you don't need to do it all for free. That's like really dumb. And when people tell me that now, I just kind of laugh because I know how dumb it is and you know how much my life changed when I started doing it. But uh, something to consider if you're in that same boat as well. I don't care if you spend the money on me, like go spend it on somebody. And speaking on that note, Nolan asks, how do you set a good first impression with someone that can mentor you? So. And obviously there are mentors that require you to pay. That's what I just talked about. You know, if you're willing to pay, then that's the first impression that you're willing to put your money where your mouth is. And if you pay some money to join mentorship, then it's very likely you're gonna take action. On the flip side, if you try and get everything for free and it costs you nothing to do, you're less likely to take action. That's the truth because you have nothing to lose. So it just depends which path you're trying to go. If you're trying to get a mentor um, to teach you for free, you better be showing some extreme value to show them that you know, you're worth their time. You know, Try and add value to their life, whether it's through finding them a deal, doing work for them, doing something. But never, ever, ever, okay, please don't ever do this. Never ask a mentor, can I pick your brain? Can I just take you to coffee? That is not adding value to their life. You're wasting their time, okay? Um, <laughs> if anyone ever asks me that, I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing, right? It just tells me you're not very self-aware of you know, what you are and what you're doing, like and how bad of a question that is and how big of an ask it is. It just shows cluelessness. So don't ever do that. Um, if you want somebody to mentor you for free, like I said, figure out a way that you can add value to them. And on the flip side, if you have somebody that you want to mentor you and they already have coaching programs that you can pay for, find a way to pay for it, you know? Get creative, even if you don't have the money, if you believe in that mentor and you believe in yourself, find a way to get the money. And if you can't figure out how to get the money, then you don't want it bad enough. That's the reality. 
By the way, I got a lot of mentorship questions on this round. Uh, Brian says, do you or will you ever offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship? Um, I don't see myself doing it anytime soon. I have never once offered one-on-one -on -one mentorship in my whole career. And you know, it doesn't mean I haven't like helped people one-on-one. -on -one. I've helped a lot of people one-on-one, -on -one, but I've never wanted to create a program where it was like, yeah, you know, I'll mentor you one-on-one. -on -one. Here's the cost. Here's the times. Here's you know, how often we'll meet. Like, I ain't got time for that, nor do I want to do that. I would rather do things that can impact a lot of people with my time. By me making this video, you know, I'm mentoring you. If you're watching this, this is like a mentorship call. And I'm now able to go mentor thousands of people by doing it in this way. If I were to just do one call with somebody right here privately, yeah, I can impact them and, and really help their life, but it's only one person I'm helping. I would rather help thousands of people with that same amount of time with the same thing I said. Because most people, at the end of the day, are going through the same problems. There's like not new problems that, you know, are so unique to you. Like, that's the truth. Most people are going through the exact same things. And so, as long as you can figure out what these common problems are, um, you can create things to address them. Um, case in point, it's actually why I created The Wealthy Way. I realized that everybody was having the same problem of time management, of you know, trying to figure out how to set proper goals, of trying to figure out how to delegate, trying to figure out, you know, what actually makes them happy. What uh, is, should they be spending their time on? Like, these are all things that people kept asking me. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make a course for it. I could have, you know, talked to everybody individually, but by spending the time to make the course and just do it, I'm now able to give it to the masses. And we've had thousands and thousands of people already go through the course um, because I did it that way versus one-on-one. -on -one. So. To answer your question, um, I probably won't do one-on-one. -on -one. There's not really even a price that I would do it for because I just know my time is so valuable and it's the only limited resource I have. So I wanna make sure that with it, I'm either impacting as many people as possible with every action I do as far as you know work and mentorship goes, or I'm using that time to spend with my family and enjoy the things I wanna enjoy in my life. If I had 20 Bitcoin, would you get a crypto loan to buy a property? So. This is a new endeavor for me, but um, I actually started leveraging my crypto. I have all of my ETH leveraged, and um, I took a loan out against it. I pay less than 2% a year to borrow against my ETH, and it allows me to keep that position of Ethereum, and I can go take out dollars to buy real estate if I want. But what I actually did was I took out more Ethereum um, with the leverage, and I ended up buying NFTs. And so now I've got this you know, collection of NFTs that have value. And then I also still have my ETH position. So, um, you know, I've been leveraging in real estate for a long time. And to me, it just, it makes sense to leverage in crypto if you believe in it. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Top three favorite cars you've drove. Well, honestly, I'm still not really a car guy. Um, the cars that I actually like, I've just bought. So I've got the Porsche Taycan that I drive. It's my daily driver. Uh, it's really, it's the only car I own. And then I recently just bought my wife a Cadillac Escalade. So uh, she's driving that, it's a lot of fun. I think we're gonna have some good family trips with it. And those are the only cars we own. <laughs> if, if I liked driving another car, I would have bought that instead. So um, those are my two favorite to drive. Are you looking for JV equity for your multifamily deals? Absolutely. So this is exactly what we're doing at my company, Pineda Capital. People are bringing us deals in their markets that are extremely undervalued and we're just partnering with them. We're letting them operate it. We're letting them bring us the deal. We raise the capital and we kind of watch over them and what they're doing. Um, it's a great system as long as we have a really good operator, someone bringing us the deal that we trust and the numbers look good. So if you've got a deal that you'd like to JV, um, bring it to us. Now you're gonna have to have some experience. If it's your very first deal, then it's gonna to be tough for us to do it because it doesn't fit with our business model. In that scenario, we'd probably rather you wholesale us the deal so that we can go and operate it ourselves. But if you're an experienced operator, you know what you're doing, you know your market, we're happy to give you equity and you know be partners on the deal. Are you thinking to go out of Las Vegas flipping houses? Not really. Um, I think we do just fine here in Vegas. I've got my mind on so many other things that uh, are bigger opportunities than trying to go flip in other states. So, that is my main focus, but uh, I wanna grow our house flips here in Vegas as much as we can, so that's the goal. But anyways, that's it for this episode of Ask Ryan. Make sure you subscribe to catch the next one, and I'll see you then. Peace.